folks, today we're going to have your first film breakdown now that we're on video. It won't be in the podcast. So again, if you want to see five minutes of a little bit of film breakdown, make sure you go to YouTube, Locked on Seminoles. Drake, let's start with the topic of that video, and that's play calling. That's been sort of the hot thing around the beat, not the beat, the writers necessarily, but people going around. Kenny Dillingham had a 17-minute conference about it, and he basically said without saying that they're going to keep calling the plays that we see because that's what they have the personnel to do. How do you feel about the play calling so far? What's frustrating you? What do you like? What do you want to see done differently? I mean, we we have to do that primarily because, like, our quarterbacks before one are extremely, extremely limited. I mean, Mackenzie Milne cannot really push the fall super far downfield. Jordan Travis, as much as we, you know, we like the deep ball, like his legs, his intermediate passing leaves a lot to be desired. And also our offensive line is starting to get back and become healthy where we're going to have to rely a lot of the trick creation, a lot of those screen plays like we'll see later on when actually when you do your little breakdown in the lab. So, I mean, I don't hate the guy, but it's more just like, I mean, the play calling – has been was poor in the first I want to say three to four games I think now it's starting to get a little bit better and I kind of take that more that Norvell has a lot more hand and say inside play calling so I mean as long as we keep scoring points I'm just I mean I'll be fine with it so yeah no I'm I'm with you man and unfortunately I think we're gonna have to score a lot more points to beat the teams coming up on our schedule you look at UNC coming up this week and they are a much better team than any team we've faced so far they stumbled against Georgia Tech um, they actually have two losses on the year, but they're at number 20 in the ESPN FPI. So that's not something that you want to see and think the offense is struggling. That being said, it and again, y'all see this in the breakdown in a second, but the big complaint has been the screen passes. And it's odd. I agree with the screen passes, right? I think when you have an arm like Travis's, he's, he slings it pretty well. He gets it to the boundary or the field side, whichever side you're going to quickly but you're also asking your receivers to block 15 or 20 times a game so you'll see one play where there's a blown block I want to get your take on that fair is not the right word but even though it's like yeah okay if if McDonald doesn't miss that block that's not an interception if Parchment hits that block he doesn't have to do a little fumble drill touchdown thing but I mean do you really think it's fair to be asking receivers who don't go into that position looking to block to be blocking 15 or 20 times a game. I don't know if it's not fair. I mean, I just think it's, you know what? You're right. It's not fair to ask them because that's, that's exhausting. I mean, like you see Keyshawn Helton and you see Andrew Parchman, you see Cam McDonald. They're not typically the biggest dudes. And I mean, I know they're not going up against linebackers, but that is just not really what you're asked to do. And also no, like there's nothing to where, what are you going to tell these recruits in window when they want to come in and say, oh, am I going to be blocking most of the time? Or, you know, I'm not going to be doing that many slant routes. I think we saw, what, what, maybe two, maybe three. Or or if, am I not going to be going deep because my QB, you know, can't throw that far downfield? So it's like maybe not fair. I think that's probably the best way to put it. Yeah, I, th- I think let me – yeah, I, I'm glad you agreed because I want to caveat because I can see someone right now. Well, fair is whatever your coach asks you to do. I, I mean fair in the sense of like – judging them by it because yeah you're right you do what you're asked to do but again these kids weren't brought in to be blockers so to say well if they just make the block every time it's like yeah but again that's not their skill set so i do three screen pass four screen pass breakdowns i look at one that could have worked a lot better but got a few yards early in the game then i look at one instance where i agree with y'all that they're too conservative in their play calling they have an opportunity to take a shot they opt for the screen instead And then I show one where the screen works beautifully, the Cam McDonald touchdown. I break that down. So I've got three. I had one other one in there where they'd set up the middle of the field uh, and a young man drops it right off his hands. But I didn't want to have a play of us just ripping on him. So Drake, for the folks watching on YouTube, can we roll that video? Yes, sir. Give me one second to pull it up. All right, thanks, guys. So we're going to break down one of the early plays of the game that It's probably more of a setup play, but it still shows what Dillingham was talking about. They want to exploit soft coverages. So we look right here. Look, we get four guys on our side over here. They bring four guys over. They got one, two. Let me make this line a little better. Three and four. I can make this guy look like that. Give me a little bit of that. Some of that color. So they're bringing the guys over, but look how soft they're being in the coverage right here. There isn't another guy besides the first defender 
until four yards off the line of scrimmage. So they're thinking, look, we've got an easy four yards here. We've got numbers. We've got these three blocking on one, two, three. And that fourth guy isn't until back here at, what is that? Five, 10, 12 yards back. You've got a linebacker you have to worry about here, but we assume he'll be taken care of. So that is what they're going for, right? You throw the ball out here. He gets behind a wall of defenders. Now, the execution left a bit to be desired, as you will see here in a second, because we forget to account for this guy. Now, again, I'm not defending the coaches, not defending the players. I don't know whose fault it was, but what you'll see is you get a double team right here. Cam McDonald comes up, joins it on this, and they seal him back to here. This receiver, I, I'll be honest, I'm not sure who's out there, comes up and takes this man, but they forget to account for this linebacker back there, snaps it, throws it, and right there. Gets tackled on a one-yard game for what very easily could have been a much longer play. All right, so here's an example of where I think they got a little bit too conservative. So we've run a couple screens on this drive. We're down at the 30-yard line. We've got first and 10, and our running back's driving. What do you do there? Simple. You go to play action. Everyone who's played mad knows that. And what do you have right here? You've got one linebacker. Now, again, we're seeing the soft coverage. Look at all that room. Look at all of this room. I mean, this looks like an Adam Fuller defense with the amount of room they're giving us. They've got one safety up top. But again, the middle of the field, guys, is open like a 7-11 as long as you can move this guy a little bit forward. Keep an eye on where he starts right there on the 25-yard line. Let's clear this out of there. So what I want to see is you're setting them up on screen. So what are they thinking? They're thinking it's going to be a screen over here. You also have your back here. So you use a little play action, right? You have him go and either max protect or maybe roll out. Andrew Parchment's right here. Like I said, middle of the field is wide open. I don't know if it was Dillingham or Norvell. We're not going to split hairs on that. They call it far too conservatively here for my taste. Ball snapped right here. Look, you've got on the play action as the this guy falls. Uh, I believe that's Trayshawn Ward back there, but that's all right. Look, you've moved him up. 2.5 yards you've created a whole avenue right here for Andrew Parchment and what do you do they don't exploit that they just decide to throw another screen pass now look I get it I understand what Kenny Dillingham's saying right he's saying hey we've got soft coverage we've got numbers because if you look you've got what is that a 10 yards up to that next guy you've got a blocker right here you've got a block right here if you can seal them off but I don't understand why not exploit the middle of the field here and let him catch something with some momentum as he's running. You probably get to the change there. Either way, it's first down, so an eight-yard gain is a huge success. All right, so I'm going to give a little bit of credit where credit is due here because you really see what Dillingham's talking about there of using their pressure against them and using screens to exploit that. This looks like a pretty simple look right here. We've got two guys out wide. They've got one guy here. It looks like they're showing that they're probably in a zone coverage. You can see they've got four over the top. So they're just going to divide this field into quarters, right? They're really respecting, well, they're going to go deep with it, right? But you get my point. They're, they're respecting the deep pass game here of Jordan Travis. Good to see that. Now, what they're planning here, I, I'm not 100% sure if this was a check or the original plan, but you've got Cam McDonald right here in the backfield. You're going to look for him to just run a nice little slip out. And he's basically going to catch a little bit, you know, you could call it a, a little dig route, but it's, it's more of a screen. And these guys are going to clear. They're going to be there on the block against the deep safeties. And the key here is watch. This guy starts to come in. Let me make that a different color because there's a lot of yellow on the screen. This guy's going to start to creep in. And when he does that, you see Keyshawn Helton, good heads up play, gives a little bit of a signal up to Jordan Travis right there, tells him, hey, the pressure's coming. And when he does that, McDonald, again, on the same route, is just going to slip right under him, and we're going to have a great play there. Watch this play out. See, there it is right there. Slips under. He catches it. And just a great effort by McDonald to run it in. So that's where you can see they're, they're talking about, hey, we're using the screens as a weapon against soft coverage, trying to be, bring pressure. You see soft coverage from the safeties. They try to bring pressure up close and they leave a massive gap there for our offense to attack. Really well drawn up, really well executed. That'll give you an idea of what the screen pass is for. You know, Dillingham said they use the screen pass against soft coverage, where you see they have a lot of room at the line of scrimmage, and the whole idea there is to do one of two things. You're either going to make them come up and play press man, 
or they're not going to, and you're going to take three to five yards every time. And I think, again, like I showed in that one play, if you're going to keep using the setup play when you finally set them up, you need to take your shots. But I don't disagree with what he's saying. Look, if they're going to give us five yards every time, you're not a good offense. Take five yards every time. Don't get greedy and say, well, why take five, you know, when we could try this play for seven or eight. Pop screens to the side, run up the middle. I think that's kind of your key to victory at this point, and that's sort of your identity as an offense. So, folks, that is going to do it for me for the week, but not going to do it for Locked on Seminoles. We still have three more episodes coming your way. We're going to have Know Your Foe on Friday, right, Drake? Yep, yeah, Friday. So we're, we're going to drop Know Your Foe with Candace Cooper, formerly of Locked on Tar Heels. She's actually the one that got us our start on this network, bringing us from our old show. So thanks, Candace. Uh, and then she's now the host of Locked on ACC. She'll be joining Drake on Friday. Saturday, we're going to have our gambling special, Danny's Dominoes. Tune in for the picks. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been fantastic being with you on video all week. Uh, it's a little... It's interesting to be able to watch yourself on your on your office TV up here for the first time. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of cool. All of you listening to the podcast, we saw the numbers surge back this week. I'm glad that the Syracuse win seems to have renewed your faith in Florida State football and has renewed your interest in Locked On Seminoles. Again, from me, from Drake, from Dave, from Holly, from Stacy, a heartfelt thank you. Make sure you like share, subscribe, hit us on YouTube, and leave us a five-star review. I'm Max, that was Drake, and this was Locked on Seminoles. Take care, everybody, and we're going to beat UNC this weekend. Let's go. Upset City, baby. Upset City, baby. Let's ride. Let's go.